Oh no, I know what's gonna happen. My name's Michael. I'm director of the QT Center for Robotics, a roboticist and a keen film geek. And I'm back to analyze engineering in the movies again. So when analyzing engineering concepts in the movies, you've always got to ask yourself the question, how realistic is this? How much is this Hollywood magic? And the answer for the films we'll be reviewing today is it's a little bit of each. Some of this is really fantastical and some of this is surprisingly close to current technologies. To really get stuck into the engineering concepts in a lot of these movies, we will have to delve into the plot a little bit. So obligatory spoiler warning. One of the technologies that has totally emerged onto the film scene have been drones. You see drones in just about every blockbuster that hits the screen. One of these is one of the recent Spider-Man movies where you see Spider-Man battling a very impressive and very capable swarm of drones. Now the drones in this movie are pretty fantastic. They have these amazing hologram projection capabilities which means that they can pretend very convincingly to be a giant elemental monster. Now the reality is drones have come a really long way in terms of real world technological capability in just a very short time. Drones have really only become widespread over the last decade or so, but they're not quite at the level or capability that we see in the movie. Drones have energy considerations, they've got to carry batteries, They've got payload considerations and they have endurance considerations. A lot of drones can only fly for about 10 minutes. One last ride. In Top Gun Maverick, Maverick the pilot is back. He's been given the job of being test pilot for a Mark 10 experimental plane. In the movie, of course, Maverick takes it a little bit too far, pushes it beyond its limits and the plane explodes catastrophically. Uh, and he is shown later on to have successfully ejected from the plane. Now, ejecting from a plane at such high speed is incredibly dangerous. It has happened at least once with an SR-71 in the past, and even that was a touch and go matter. And doing it at more than three times that speed would be very challenging and would probably require some sort of protective ejection model to make it even remotely plausible. The plane itself in Top Gun Maverick would have to be a really special design. So the aerodynamics, the shape of the plane would have to be crafted carefully to enable it to fly safely at Mark 10. The materials on the surface of the plane would be exposed to incredible heating stress, much like a spacecraft re-entering the atmosphere. And so a lot of special materials science would have to go into what is presumably a very expensive skin of the plane in order to make it safe to fly. When I watched this scene in Leave the World Behind, I was literally jumping up and down in front of my TV and shouting at my wife, I know what's gonna happen. I know exactly what's gonna happen. I've worked extensively in the area of autonomous vehicles. And so as soon as I saw that Tesla racing down the road, I went, oh no, I know what's gonna happen. And of course, in the actual scene, we see Tesla after Tesla racing down the road without a driver and crashing into this ever-growing graveyard. What we see in this scene plays to a central concept of science fiction, which is if there is a disastrous event and humans disappear or are radically reduced, what will happen to all the automation and tech that doesn't necessarily need us in order to continue operating? And this concept of tech continuing to do its thing, even if we have disappeared uh, from the earth, is a really interesting one to consider. So it wouldn't happen in situations where the tech relies on, say, the power grid, because the power grid is obviously going to degrade in one of these uh, dystopian futures. But in many other situations, for example, a Tesla, which has its own batteries on board, which will last it quite a while, you can see the Tesla perhaps doing things itself for weeks or months afterwards until it runs out of juice. In the movie June, we see a lot of futuristic tech concepts. One of the really interesting ones are the still suits that the characters wear. So these are these enclosed suits they wear in the very unforgiving deserts of Arrakis. 
and these suits recycle the fluids uh, and other excretions of the people inside the suits in order to preserve water. Now this sounds like a far-fetched concept, but it's something that's actually been at the forefront in areas like space exploration. One of the ways that humans keep cool is by sweating and by that sweat evaporating. It's a common cooling process. If that sweat instead is being immediately reclaimed by the still suit, the people in those suits would potentially be getting really, really hot. And so they would probably need some other source of active cooling and that source of active cooling would likely need some sort of power source. Humans absolutely need water to survive. And so organizations like NASA have been investigating for years the concept of recycling and repurposing liquid emissions from a human. Now they've been able to recycle very high percentages of this. You couldn't quite keep someone going forever, but you could massively extend the duration of a mission. Once you get over the sort of ickiness of the concept of drinking your own urine, it's a really cool tech concept to consider. In the movie Elysium, Matt Damon's character is working in a factory and he accidentally receives a fatal dose of radiation, which gives him only a few days to live and one of his friends offers him the chance to be surgically implanted with this exoskeleton. The concept of exoskeletons is everywhere. It's a little bit like drones. We see it in many movies, movies like Edge of Tomorrow, like the Matrix series. Of course, the way you usually see exoskeletons is in combat. In real life, what a practical exoskeleton looks like could vary hugely. But a lot of the startups and companies operating in this area are working on very minimal exosuits, which essentially sometimes involve nothing more than a little attachment that attaches to your knee joints and your elbow joints. It has limited power, limited endurance, but it enables you to run faster. It might enable you to lift twice as much, not 10 times as much, but twice as much is still useful. And these are very useful potentially for obviously military applications, but also in warehouse or labor intensive jobs. Another very useful area is for people who are going through physical rehabilitation or don't have full physical capabilities. It can augment their physical capabilities and enable them to do stuff that they just wouldn't have been able to do otherwise. Where you want it. I've had a lot of fun today going through some of these engineering concepts as they've been depicted in the movies. It's all a bit of fun. Sometimes the depictions are so crazy and so far beyond reality, they're just for entertainment value, but other times it's really surprisingly close to what is possible in reality. Whether or not it's realistic, one of the great things about movies is that they show us what's possible or might be possible. They get us thinking about these concepts, they get us imagining what might be possible in future, and that alone is incredibly useful and I'll be back again to talk you through them 